four, three, two, one. Are we live? Okay. Um. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. My name is Gregory Bowers, and welcome to USF Housing Live. <laughs> so, as many of our returning viewers know, USF Housing Live is all about answering people's questions live. So today, we're going to start off by answering some of our audience's questions live. Are we excited about that audience? <laughs> Great. All right, so let's start off with you over there. So how will, like, when does the application for fall housing make become available? Ah, very nice. I tend to get this question a lot, and it's a very popular question. So for those of you that are waiting, you'll be excited to find out that the fall 2016 housing application comes out next week. All right, any more questions? So how can I find a roommate, and how will I know if they're like a good roommate? Well, there's many different ways to find a roommate, but I think the question we really should focus on is how to know if someone is going to be a good roommate. So, I have one question that you should always ask your roommate, and that is, do you like Mariah Carey? Because we all know, if they say yes, that means they are a good person, and if they're a good person, then they will make a good roommate. But if they say no, then I will let you connect the dots. Uh, excuse all right. me, excuse me, uh, I have a question. I'm sorry, sir. We don't have time for that now, question. Uh, can you tell me, what do I do if Gregory Bowers is giving me blatantly incorrect information? Well, that's very interesting because I am Gregory Bowers and I am never wrong, so that can't happen. However, I do have some advice for you, sir, and that is to do what Greg says. And in this instance, Greg says, please be quiet. Uh, uh, no, I think I, I, I deserve another question here. I'd like to know, wh what happened to your hair? All right, so that's a good question. I can understand I look a little different now, but that is because normally I wear a toupee on the show. And right now the toupee is being dry cleaned. And now you just see me as I am. That's something you didn't know about me. So I'd like to open this segment with Greg Declassified, with other information you don't know about me. I want you to trust me, so I will provide you with my personal cell phone number, my social security number, my physical home address, and a list of all of my greatest Okay, fears. hang on a second, hang on a second. Something's not right here. <gasps> An imposter. And I would have gotten away with it too. Live from Tampa, Florida, it's, it's USF, USF Housing, Housing Live. Live. Sierra Rose, Gregory Bowers, Dasha Antipova, Kevin Mahoney, Nikolina Kosanovich, Jill Johnson, Stephanie Jockman, James Keith, Jack Dickens, Monday, August 7th, 2016. Coming to you from the beautiful University of South Florida campus in Tampa, it's the season finale of USF Housing Live! All right, welcome everyone, welcome. My name is Gregory Bowers and this is USF Housing Live, coming to you live, of course, from the University of South Florida campus here in Tampa. This is our final episode and we are so excited to get ready for grand opening and our week of welcome, also known as WOW. Wow! All right, how you doing, audience? All right, we've got a great audience here tonight and so it's all about getting you ready for your experience here at USF. Now, before we get into it, of course, I want to make sure you can ask us any questions. And you do that by logging into YouTube and typing your questions in the live chat. They'll send them to me right here live on the set and we'll answer you on the air. So, uh, but first I want to show you a video that'll help you out with that. And then we're going to have a special segment coming up right after that. So let's roll that video. More Housing Live coming your way right after this. If you have a YouTube account, please take this time to sign in so you can post questions during the show. Don't have a YouTube or Google account? Think again. Every USF student has a Google account. To get started, select Sign In. Next, enter your USF email address. Don't type in a password, just select Sign In. Then, you will be prompted with the USF NetID login screen. 
Type in your NetID and password, then click sign in. Congratulations, you are now signed into YouTube with your Google account. Now that you are signed in, please make Rocky happy and subscribe. You can do this on our YouTube channel page or below the video player. Right around the corner, it's coming up on Thursday, August 18th. Your day begins in the Marshall Student Center. It's going to be running from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. That's where check-in happens, and then your day moves on from there. Uh, so I know there's a lot of excitement around moving. I thought it would be best for us to check in with our senior moving correspondent, Kevin Mahoney, who's been all around campus getting ready for moving. So how's it going out there, Kevin? Hey, Greg. Well, i got to tell you, everybody out there has been playing Pokemon Go. It's really crazy. Um, Kevin, yeah. Um, so have you joined in on the hype? Actually, yes. I caught one of my own. Uh, I see that. So, uh, uh, Kevin, uh, what, what Pokemon did you get? Oh, oh. Right, it's right here. Oh, um, Kevin, um, I, don't, I don't think that's a Pokemon in there, man. What are you talking about? It says Pokemon Containment Vessel right on the front. <laughs> Kevin, uh, I hate to break it to you, pal, but Pokemon are not real. Greg, it's called Augmented Reality. I realize your generation is still getting very excited over color TV, but get with the times, brah. <sighs> Oh, okay. Um, uh, I think we have a serious problem, folks. Greg, I have a picture of myself catching it right here. Um, um, Kevin, that is a duck. Um, so I, I think we're going to have to call the police. Uh, so Whatever, old man. <laughs> Team Mystic! <laughs> okay, well, um, so uh, I think that uh, we're going to have to take a short break uh, so that we can get in touch with the authorities and, of course, give Kevin a chance to contact his attorneys. It's rolling around on the floor. It's not really a duck. I promise this is what happens on live show. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's right, folks, setting the bar low for our season finale. And so um, let's hear it for Kevin Mahoney, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, so, um, coming up with our next guest, uh, we're going to be actually meeting with our panel, but we have a video we're going to roll for you first. And so, we've got a whole lot more show coming for you. Let's roll that video, Housing Live, right after this. Hi guys, my name is Danny and I'm one of the student leaders here at the Center for Leadership and Civic Engagement, CLCE for short, and that's conveniently located between the MSC Food Court and the SG Computer Services. And if you follow me, I'll take you on a tour. So the mission here at the CLCE is to create catalysts for positive social change and right here is where all the magic happens with our student leaders. Here in the CLCE we have many opportunities for students to pursue including employment. Here's Natalie, one of our federal work study employees. Natalie, share with us what you like about working here. So being in the CLCE gives you a great opportunity to be able to direct students both incoming and first years on how they can get involved in and around campus and I appreciate that. Thank you, Natalie. And right behind me is one of our leadership classrooms where we offer our leadership minor for students to pursue. And currently, they're getting it ready for you in the fall. And one of our signature events is Charge Grab Service by the Horns, and it can be your first USF tradition. All you have to do is sign up on Bullsync, and you'll be good to go. The CLCE couldn't happen without the help of our amazing student leaders. And right here is the Emerging Leaders Institute, which is a program designed for first-year students to gain leadership skills here at USF. Fun fact about the CLCE, we have two floors, the first floor and the third floor of the MSC. And if you follow me, I'm taking you to the third floor. Did you know that USF offers 600 plus student organizations? And if you come up to the third floor of the CLCE, we'll help navigate you through some of them and help find the one that you want to be a part of. And if you can't make it to the MSC, head on to Bullsync and you can find all our information regarding events, programs, and student organizations all online. Welcome back, everyone. And so we have our first panel here. And so joining us is Kimberly Santos from New Student Connections. Let's give it up for Kimberly. <laughs> and Mallory Trostasett from the Center for Leadership and Civic Engagement. Welcome. Thank you. And so I got a million one questions for you. <laughs> I can only do about 400,000. Let's dive right sure. in, shall we? Sounds good. All right, let's do it. And so we just watched a video about uh, Center for Leadership and Civic Engagement, also commonly called CLCE. So if anyone has any questions from watching that video or during the show, make sure to just go ahead and type them in the live chat. and They'll send them to me right here on the set and we'll ask them for you live on the air, okay? And so diving right in with Mallory, who are you and what do you do here? 
Who am I? Well, my name is Mallory. I'm an associate director in our Center for Leadership Civic Engagement, also known to you as CLCE. And I have the great privilege of planning programs and events that help our students here at USF become uh, leaders that can really make a positive change in our community. And so uh, can you tell me more about what is CLCE and what do you offer students at USF? Sure. So we believe that every student here has the opportunity to create positive change, like my shirt says. Um, and so we do that through a variety of experiences that you can plug into either through leadership capacities or just through participation to get exposed to leadership skills that you can then implement in community setting. Uh, and so how specifically can students get involved with CLCE? Well, there's two great ways. So if you have the opportunity to come and visit our office, as you saw in the video just before, we're located on the first and third floor of the Marshall Student Center. Um, and so that's a great drop-in. We have staff and student staff ready at all times to help plug you in to experiences that you're looking for. And if you can't make it, um, the other best place to go is BullSync. And so I hear a lot about BullSync. I'm sure some of our incoming freshmen are familiar, but can you give us just the, a quick overview of what that is? Sure, BullSync is just an online platform, sort of like your Facebook one-stop shop to get involved and connected on campus. And so you can go to BullSync and um, log into your page, and that'll give you an opportunity to find nonprofit partners who have service events coming up. It also shows you events that our department is hosting, but you can then also register for the 600 plus student organizations here at the university. 600. That's right. All right, and so that's quite a few. And so I think, do we recommend students limit it to like 400 uh, per year or something like that? You might want to narrow it down. And we definitely have some student staff that can work with you. Our lead fellows are there to do one-on-one -on -one consultants um, to, to help you identify of those 600, which are the four or five you might be most interested in. And so let's say a student wanted to get that help. Would they just do a walk-in or is it appointment? Um, you can do both. So you can definitely walk in at all times. Um, we have staff, professional staff, they're eight to five money through Friday. And then we have student, Kim's one of our student leaders in our office, so she can tell you, we have students in there at all times. And so you can come by and just ask a student sitting around a table, how do I get involved? And they'd be able to help you. All right, and so uh, I want to switch gears here and talk about CHARGE. Yeah. Uh, CHARGE is something, now how, this is a new program, fairly new, right? When did CHARGE begin and what is it? Well, it's been around for quite some time, but we re-envisioned it um, a couple years ago and we renamed it CHARGE. So CHARGE is really your first opportunity to participate in service at the university. And we believe here at USF that being a bull means giving back. So CHARGE takes place on Saturday, August 20th. Um, it's a day of service, so you'll come to campus and you can um, get connected to a nonprofit. We will provide you transportation. We'll send you out. You can do service with your um, fellow bulls, incoming mostly bulls, and some upperclassmen will be your site leaders. And then you'll come back, and we've got some um, wrap-up stuff that you can do here, and then we'll send you on to all the other great WOW events happening. All right. Oh, WOW events. We like those. Yeah. Uh, does anyone know what WOW stands for out there? Week anyone? of Welcome. Week of Welcome, okay. Wow. Kimberly knows. <laughs> Oh, there we go. And so um, a week of welcome, as I like to remind everyone, is it's many things, but it's also, to the Hungry Bowl, 10 days of free food. And so that's pretty good. Uh, and so uh, moving on here, we were talking about some of those service projects. A lot of students are asking, how do I track my hours? So what does that look like for them? Yeah, well, you're probably seeing a theme. BullSync is clearly another uh, place where you can track your hours. So when you log into your page on the top right is your actual profile link. You select it. It says involvement. You'll select involvement, and then you can add your involvement entry. So you do want to keep information, and you want to make sure that you have the names and, and contact information of the people that you're doing service with, and then you'll input those and track those through the BullSync system. All right, and so uh, what other programs are out there that uh, new students should be looking for? Yeah, we have tons in our office, and especially for a first-year student, um, I definitely recommend our Emerging Leaders Institute. Um, and we've got uh, lots of different events that are happening through the fall and the spring. So Stampede of Service is one that is a tradition here at the university. And um, in terms of civic engagement and service programs, another one that I think is a really great opportunity for first year students is Bulls for Kids. And Kimberly actually is the president of Bulls for Kids and has a lot of experience with that. So she can share a little bit about what that organization is and, and what that impact looks like. Yeah, tell us about it. Yeah, um, Bulls for Kids is very similar to Dance Marathon other, on another campus. And we raise awareness and um, some money for John Hopkins All Children's Hospital. So it's a year-long movement where we just try to promote the hospital and really talk about the great things that Ch Children's Miracle Network does. And um, I got involved with that my first year at USF, and um, 
I don't think I've ever left the CLCE since then and <laughs> have just been involved there. And um, even as a board, we create a team for SOS to really support our, not our service partners, but I guess our student leader partners in the CLCE. And that's wonderful to hear about. And so congratulations for that Thank and you being in that role. Um, we are probably going to get a lot of motivated students because USF Bulls are really hard mo uh, hard working. They're self-motivated. And so I know that that first question is, which, which organization should I connect with? But for a lot of students, the next question is, how do I become a leader? And so can you tell us a little bit about what it was in your experience and how you were able to get into a leadership role? Um, I found out about this organization just on the class of 2017 page. An orientation team leader posted it and um, she was just like, hey, this is what we're doing if anybody's interested. So I just went, started attending some meetings and then really seeing the impact and the way I grew within the year, that was really how I was like, okay, let me take one more leadership role. And then I went from being a committee member to a director to a vice president and now I get to be president of a really great organization. That is awesome. Well, yeah. thank you both. Uh, it's time for a short break. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll take a short break. And so our next video is Best Places, and that's going to star Kevin Mahoney for probably his final appearance ever because he's being hauled away in handcuffs. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, so um, he's actually working the camera over there. Uh, hey, Kevin. Uh, and also starring our steam director, C.R. Rose. So let's roll our last ever Best Places. We got more with our panel right after this. We're at the Beta Volleyball Course where it's the best place to bond with your neighbors over a game of volleyball. We're in the Serenity Room on the third floor of the Marshall Student Center where it's the best place to practice some yoga. We're here at the Marshall Student Center where it's the best place to get involved with your fellow books. We're here in your residential area where it's the best place to connect with your residence life coordinator. in the residence halls, where it's the best place to celebrate that now you're a bull too. Welcome, class of 2020. Go, Go Bulls! Bulls. Welcome back, everyone. And so we're here with Mallory and Kimberly talking about your experience and getting you ready for your time here at USF. And so we're going to go over to Kimberly. We've got some questions for you. Kimberly, how are you doing tonight? Great. How are you? I'm okay. And so, Kimberly, uh, tell me, who are you and what do you do here? Um, my name is Kimberly Santos, and I currently serve as a peer advisor leader in the Office of New Student Connections. And so are you still called pals over there? Yes, we're everyone's friend. <laughs> you're everyone's friend. And so tell me, what do the pals do? Um, uh, us peer advisor leaders, there's four of us, and we try to get students connected and really aid them in the transitioning to USF. So whether they're a new student, a transfer student, or a student who's been here for a while and hasn't really found a way to really get plugged into the university, we really just meet with them and do some one-on-one -on -one coaching and try to make sure that they find um, where they call home at USF. And so you touched base a little bit just to make sure students watching know, what populations of students would uh, want to come seek out your office? Any student. If they are new students who um, are just fresh out of high school and really don't know what to do now with USF, um, or transfer students who have spent some time at another institution and decided that USF is the place they wanted to be and still want to get involved, or students who have been here for quite some time and just really haven't found some place to call home on campus. And so we know that fall is coming. And yes. so can you share with us, what are some opportunities for new students? Week of welcome, or wow, and, <laughs> and first 50 days are really the first thing right off the bat that students should get involved with and um, WOW starts that Thursday of move-in. So right when students move in on campus on Thursday in the morning, hit us up in the afternoon at the MSC for our celebration kickoff. And we literally take over the entire Marshall Student Center and just have a giant balloon drop in celebration with all new and returning students to campus. That is awesome. I always have fun seeing that because we really do pack the Marshall Center. Thousands of students. Tons of balloons. It's great. You'll get a free balloon and a friend. And so you want to make sure you're there. So <laughs> when is kickoff going to be this year? It'll be Thursday, August 18th. I think that's the date. Um, and uh, that really is going to be the kickoff and just the first event of many for Week of Welcome and first 50 days. Awesome. Um, yeah. And so uh, as you mentioned, the first 50 days. And so what's the first 50 days all about? 
Um, it's just about different events that are on campus within the first 50 days of students being here. So weekends are included and um, it'll be different student organization showcases. Some offices put on events. Um, I know this um, New Student Connections, we have also um, capture our incoming class of 2016 photo. So whether they're new students or transfer students who are, this is their first semester starting at USF, um, it's a chance for them to really be a part of history. We take a photo in the baseball stadium and that spells out USF with our bodies. And it's just a really great way for them to be a part of something bigger. Awesome. Uh, and so, uh, where can students find a brochure for all the Week of Welcome stuff and first 50 days information? Um, we will have brochures on the first day that they're on campus. So that Thursday, we'll be handing them out during um, check-ins, and it's also available on our website. All right. Excellent. And so, can you tell me a little bit about the network with New Student Connections? Yeah. So, the network is... Um, an opportunity for students to connect with other students who they might not have another chance to. So it's just really interest-based, um, common experiences, shared hobbies that students may have. Um, so we have 10 networks that range from Tasting Tampa, if they're really into food and love to be a foodie, or Touring Tampa, if it's a new area for them, to outdoor and wellness, um, leadership. So it's a really broad broad spectrum for students to get their feet wet at USF. Awesome. And I hear there, there are tons of network opportunities, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so many. Awesome. And I don't know if we talked about this, but where is your office located in the Marshall Center? Our office is on the third floor of the Marshall Center. So if they go up the giant staircase right by the food court, it's on the third floor. We're very welcoming. We have a bunch of computers if students want to just hang out and chill with us. Um, a lot of the pals are always there and our professional staff is absolutely incredible and a lot of fun to be around. And so students can just roll in anytime? Yeah, um, a lot of the times the pals are there. So if they just want to hang out, get more information about our networks or want to be connected to a different office, that's really what we're there for. Awesome. You all do great work over there. I don't know if I've shared, but I was a grad student at USF some years back and I worked in that office, New Student Connections. So right you all do great work over there. And that's what I want to talk about is the transition mm -hmm. because students are coming from a high school environment to USF. And so that's going to be quite a transition. What's some advice you have to help students with that? Um, some advice that I'd offer a new student is to get involved. That's really how I found my home on campus was just getting involved in different offices with NSC and the Center for Leadership and Civic Engagement and that helped me not only find out who I was as a person, it taught me like time management for my classes. I met my best friends through all these leadership opportunities so that was really what made USF be like my place. All right, well thank you and so we are out of time but let's hear it for Mallory and Kimberly. Thank you for coming on the show. And so coming up next, we're going to roll a couple videos for you. First, we're going to show you an overview of parking and transportation at USF so you know how it all works and how to get around, of course, very important for you, and a video that's going to help you prepare to move in. So we're going to roll that. We've got more USF Housing Live coming your way. Parking on campus is simple when you follow these easy tips for success. USF parking permits are required 24 hours a day, 7 days per week. Remember to display your valid USF parking permit as instructed. Cut up old permits. Cutting up your expired parking permit prevents others from using it. Use the Bull Runner Transit to get around campus. Use the Bull Tracker to find buses and projected arrival times. If you receive a parking citation, please respond to it promptly by using the easy to use online system. As you travel around campus, remember to pay attention to any signage you may encounter. Take care not to park in a reserved space. These spaces are reserved 24 hours per day, 7 days per week for various purposes. Take care not to alter your parking permit. It's fun to draw, just please avoid doing so in your parking permit. In most cases, it's good to share with others, but when it comes to your parking permit, please keep it to yourself. If you park in an accessible parking space, be sure to display both your state permit and your USF parking permit. Remember only to buy your permit from USF Parking and Transportation Services. Unless otherwise indicated, please avoid parking on the grass, and remember to avoid parking on the sidewalk. It is important that pedestrian traffic remains unimpeded on campus. If you see a no parking sign, please avoid parking there. Common no parking areas are service drives, roadways, and fire lanes. For more information, visit usf.edu slash parking.
I'm Nikolai Kosanovich, and this is your Move In Update. Welcome to USF. We're excited for you to start your USF experience on our beautiful campus. With grand opening approaching, it's important that you are prepared for the transition to college and the campus living experience. Before you arrive, make sure you've completed all of the essentials. Communicate with your roommate to discuss who's bringing what, and be sure to review the What to Bring list on our fall move-in page at usf.edu slash housing. Grand opening happens on August 18th from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Check-in happens at the Marshall Student Center. This is where your day begins. Make sure to arrive between 9 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. so you can get support from the Bull Hall move-in crew that are located near your residence hall. They're here to make your move-in experience simple and easy. 30-minute unloading zones will be near all of the residence halls. There are designated courtesy lots located a short distance from all of the residence halls as well. You can also use the Bull Runner to get back to your residence hall after parking your car in the designated lot. If you need to arrive later, don't worry! Check-in remains open 24 hours a day. If arriving after 3.30 p.m., please go to your 24-hour desk. Magnolia, Juniper, and Poplar residents will go to the Juniper Poplar 24-hour desks. All other residents will check in at Holly L or Holly M. There will be signage directing you between the two buildings. Everyone needs to eat. If you are a first time in college student living on campus, then you signed up for a meal plan when you applied for housing. If you need assistance on grand opening day, know that there will be dining services representatives at check-in. Now, let's cut to our correspondent, Teddy Griswold, reporting on the Class of 2020 Facebook group. <laughs> I agree, Teddy. The USF Class of 2020 Facebook group is the place for new students to connect with each other in USF. Here you can communicate with your peers, get advice from upperclassmen, and also ask questions of the many USF experts. Thank you for joining us for this Move In Update. Cut. All right. Good job, everyone. That's a wrap. Hey, you. Phenomenal acting. Great job. It was very bear-like. All right, welcome back everyone. And so I'm Gregory Bowers. This is USF Housing Live brought to you by Housing Residential Education. We are the best place to live, the best place to work, and the best place to learn. Let's go down the line and introduce our panel. We have Raymond Mensa from Parking Transportation. Let's say it for Raymond. Welcome, Raymond. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We have Zuma Ramirez from the Transitional Advising Center. Welcome, Zuma. Thank you for having me. And last but not least, we have the amazing Monica Rashad from Housing and Residential Education. Thank you. All right, you ready for me to start firing some questions at you folks? Fire Let's do away. it. Let's do it. All right, Raymond, you are up. Tell us, who are you, what do you do here, and what's Parking and Transportation Services all about? Sure. Um, I'm Raymond Mensa. I'm the Director of Parking and Transportation Services here at USF Tampa Campus. Um, I'm responsible for the overall operations of Parking and Transportation Services um, on campus. <clears throat> what we oversee, we have over 20,000 um, parking spaces on campus which includes four parking garages and the rest are surface lots. Um, we also ha are responsible for the Campus Information Center, which is located at the main entrance of campus off of Fowler, as well as we operate six um, bus routes on and off campus. Um, we have about a fleet of about 40 buses um, that provide the services. And so where does the money go that, uh, that our students and the staff faculty spend on parking? Great question. I get it all the time. <laughs> so we are a self-supporting entity within the university. Uh, we don't get any funding from tuition or state appropriations. Um, so we have to generate our own revenue in order for us to, to operate. Um, the revenue we generate from permit sales are used towards our operational costs like utilities, um, fixing a parking lot, building a parking garage, labor costs. Um, it also goes towards um, any future projects um, that we may have. So it sounds like what your area does is a lot more than parking citations. It is, it is, but we're well known for citations. <laughs> <laughs> but and it's so not all that we do. We might as well address the elephant in the room, <laughs> right? Sure, so sure. let's say a student, uh, it's the first time there's an infraction, they get a citation, they don't get a warning. Sure. Uh, why would that be? Sure. 
So we issue warnings as a courtesy. Um, it's not a requirement, but we understand things happen. Um, you may be in a hurry for class. You may not notice a sign that says this is a staff parking lot, but you end up parking in there anyway as a student. So what we do is we'll issue a warning um, as a courtesy and kind of a teaching moment to say, hey, you parked in the wrong place, so next time just be more careful and don't park there. However, we have instances that are health and safety related, like parking in a no parking area or um, in front of a fire hydrant or parking in a disabled space. So since you may be impeding an ambulance or a fire truck or something from access in a building, we don't issue warnings in those situations. If you're parked in a disabled space, um, you're taking space away from someone that may really need that space, so we don't issue warnings for those. And so one question we get from time to time from students is, why do you have to issue citations at all? Sure, so in order for us to better manage um, all the spaces we have on campus to ensure that, you know, the students that pay for spaces have a place to park, you know, we have to enforce what, our rules and our regulations to make sure that we're managing um, the spaces that we have, making sure that people have a place to park when they've paid for a place to park. So I got another question for you, and I know we are similar in that housing is an auxiliary operation, that sure. we are completely self-funded, just like parking and transportation. And so what if a student is curious, they say, I pay a lot for my tuition, why am I paying for parking separately? Sure, as I mentioned earlier, um, we don't get any um, funding from tuition. We have to generate our own revenue, and the only means for generating that revenue is to um, charge for parking. And so how does a student stay connected with parking activity on campus? Sure, so visit our website. Um, we have a news and updates section there uh, on the website where you can access you know, anything that's happening on campus that may impact parking. Um, we have a listserv that you can sign up for as well. Um, that's also on our website um, in the news and updates section. <clears throat> Call our office. We're always, we have um, a phone line where there's always someone there to answer your call if you want to know what's coming up, what's going on. Um, and then you can also follow us on Twitter as well. All right, so let's say there's a big event at the Sun Dome, mm -hmm. as it happens from time to time. It does. Uh, and the lot's closed to students. So students wondering why is that? Can you tell them why? Sure. So whenever there's a large um, event, a uh, non-USF event, so say a concert, and we're expecting thousands of people on campus, what we do is we try to contain the, the traffic to the area closest to the Sun Dome. We don't want 5,000 people coming on campus and driving everywhere on campus, creating a health and safety risk, creating more traffic, creating more issues, people driving all over the place, lost. So we try to contain it to where the, the event is occurring. Um, that's why we close off those spaces to ensure that those that are coming from off campus to an event can just go directly to that location. That's good to know. So you keep it organized so that's it doesn't right. become a breakdown to. in society and becoming right. Mad Max on the USF Tampa campus. <laughs> that's right? correct. And so uh, Sarah has a question, one of our, our live viewers here. How does parking work on the early move-in days and for grand opening? Sure. So on early move-in days, we have areas that are set up. We work closely with housing. Um, we have areas that are set up for drop-off. Um, we have actually have the lots closed off. Um, so you have an area where you can come in, check in, get your keys. Um, we also allow parking on the street um, over by Ho on Holly Drive where um, parents and students can, can unload. And we have another area that's set, off, set up for parents once you've uh, unloaded and you want to go park somewhere and come back and spend time with, um, with their child before they leave. Um, we have an area that will be set up and transportation to the housing area. Excellent. Um, and also to share with you, Sarah, and everyone watching, uh, once you check in, we're going to have the different zone maps that actually tell you exactly how to get to your residential area and where you go to unload and then where you go to move your car after unloading so you can use courtesy parking and take the bull runner right back. So that's excellent. Uh, and so, uh, Raymond, I got last question for sure. you. You have any tips for our incoming students to help them be successful when they get here? Yes. Them? One tip I have is don't get advice from your roommates about parking or about <laughs> friends about parking. Call our office. Visit our website. We're always there. We're willing to help. Um, our goal is, is for the student to be successful, so we're there to help. We're not just there to write citations. So we are, we are here to help the students. So any questions they have, if they see our staff out in the field, go up to them, ask them. 
but don't take advice from your roommate or your friend because you may get the wrong information. All right, that's good. So <laughs> trust the experts. Raymond, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take a short me. break panel. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Uh, but next up, we want to roll our last ever mobile game show called Cash Cart. Happens right here on campus. Definitely play along and join us right after this for more USF Housing Live. This is how it works. We give free rides to USF students. I'm going to ask them trivia questions along the way. And if they do well, they're going to win fabulous prizes. Let's get rolling. Hey, what's your name? Michaela. Michaela, I'm Stephanie. I'm the host of Cash Cart. And so where are you going? Um, ISA building. ISA building. Okay, off we go. So are you ready to play Cash Cart? I guess so. Cool. Where do residents in South Campus go to get their mail? Aw, if only I knew what South Campus was. Um, would it happen to be JP? You're correct, one okay. cart cash. <laughs> You're good at this. Do you live in Juniper Poplar Hall? No, oh. I don't. <laughs> so, what does HOT stand for? H-O-T, HOT. Hmm. You can also ask somebody. Oh, wait, who would I ask? Anybody who's walking to stop somebody. For real? Yeah. Oh, that's that's so creepy. <laughs> Do I ask? Yeah. yeah. Excuse me. Hi. Um, would you happen to know what HOT stands for? H-O-T? No. Me either. No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. Hi. Um, would you happen to know what H-O-T stands for? The Heart of Thunder. Is it Herd of Thunder? You are correct, Herd of Thunder. Thank you. <laughs> so one card cash for you. Which dining hall is conveniently located next to the rec center? Ooh, um, that's Champs. Champs, you're correct. Nice. Hey, thank you. <laughs> what dining location is located on the first floor of the library? Dining room. Um, Starbucks? You're correct, good job. Hey, okay, I wasn't sure if it counted as a dining location, so. <laughs> so how many car caches do you have? I have four. You have four? All right, so I have one sure. more question for you. <laughs> what can you do to change your housing assignment? Ooh, um, I know it has something to do with like the housing portal on Canvas, but that's pretty much all I know. I'm sorry, that's not correct. It's you have to go to the central housing office in Argos to change your resident. Argos. Yeah, okay. to change your housing assignment. All right. So that is five questions. How many cart caches do you have? I have four. You have four. Good. Good job. And that means you win a flashlight. Hey. <laughs> so thanks for playing cash cart. No problem. Thank you for having me. This was crazy. <laughs> so congratulations on your car on your uh, flashlight. All right, welcome back, everyone. And so this is USF Housing Live. Send us your questions. We'll answer you right here live on the air. And so I'm going to jump right in before we go to our next guest. And this is from Jade. Is there currently construction anywhere on campus? That is a big yes. We are one of the largest schools in the country. We are always growing and doing so rapidly. And so you're going to see construction zones for various purposes throughout the year. Uh, one thing I should highlight since we're doing the housing show is we want to talk about uh, the new village. And so there's new construction going on in the Andros Complex area. If you see any fence is, any signage, any tape, make sure you don't cross those areas because that is for your safety. And so anytime you see construction zone, please just stay clear of that. Again, that is for your personal safety. And so great question. Keep them coming. Now we're going to go over to Zuma Ramirez from the Transitional Advising Center. Zuma, how are you doing? Good. How are you? Doing pretty well. And I'm ready to fire our first question at you. Can you Let's tell me, <laughs> who are you and what do you do here? Again, I'm Zuma Ramirez. I work with the Transitional Advising Center, known as TRAC, and I am a first and second year persistence advocate. And so can you tell me more about what is your role as an academic advisor at USF? All right, yeah, so basically I um, make sure that I address student needs. So um, I try to look up for um, solutions, uh, guide them, provide them the right resources so students are on track and they're persistent with their um, academic um, go uh, goals here. And so when we say persistence, what does that mean? 
It's just being on track and um, keeping up with all the academic needs and also utilizing the right resources so they can uh, feel motivated, connect with the institution and be successful in, in graduating within four years so they can continue in with um, their life goals. So it sounds to me like the word persistence is an important one because yes. it's all about graduation, right? Yes. And so um, let's uh, get a little bit of history from you. Can you tell me what is it that motivated you to become an academic advisor? Well, yeah, um, before um, working with higher education, I was um, doing other stuff like mental health counseling and whatnot, and I just was missing something there. Uh, Ten years ago, I started working in higher education, and I just fell in love with it. I connected. Um, students just energize me, and they motivate me to do even more stuff. Um, so when I connect with a student, I feel like I can really have um, that peace uh, because I put myself in their shoes. I was a student at one point, and I remember the excitements that um, come in college life, but I also remember feeling, you know, sometimes you feel a little lost or disconnected or how to get there. So I like to make the connection, uh, put pieces together, have a relationship with my students, build through that relationship so that they can stu students can progress and move on and do well. And so we talked a bit about persistence and getting there for graduation. So from the student perspective, what are some of the reasons they would reach out and connect with you for a meeting? Well, not only are they going to talk with uh, us advisors about their academic needs, like their semester plans, the right courses, along with their major, but also Again, I'm stressing building the relationships because as advisors, we can guide students um, into uh, the right resources, tools, uh, connecting with organizations, uh, and making sure they're in the right path. And so what does a student gain overall from that experience of connecting with their academic advisor? For me, the biggest p uh, piece will be uh, self-awareness. Mm -hmm. When students connect with that self-awareness and when they make those little connections there, they understand themselves better, they're growing, they know their likes, their dislikes, what works with them, and they can be successful while they're in college. All right, excellent. So we do want to be successful and connect yes. with your <laughs> academic advisor, right? Uh, and so. Um, when we think about the cycle throughout a year, I know that our incoming freshmen, uh, through orientation, they register for classes, but in the fall is when they're going to register for spring classes, right? Yes. yes. So when should they start uh, setting that up? As soon as possible, before registration opens up, uh, because then you're going to have the peak advising. And I will hate for students to feel rushed into just choosing courses. Again, mm -hmm. as an advocate and as an advisor, I want to make sure that I'm no, not only providing you those right courses, but what else can we do besides just going to those classes? What else can we connect so that you can be immersed in that major? So visit us as soon as uh, possible before that um, uh, registration piece opens up and I really suggest for students to visit advisors more than once per semester so again they can be aligned and we can address any other needs besides those academic needs. Excellent so planning ahead sounds like it's important as part yes. of that. <laughs> Excellent and so um, obviously we have students about to arrive here on campus mm -hmm. what about some of those students who may have had their major set for orientation, but now having second thoughts may want to change it. Do they hit the freak out button now and just start screaming, or is there another option? <laughs> there are plenty of options, and that, that's why we're here. Um, I'm also, I also work with major selection students, meaning those students that changed their mind because of various reasons, so now they need to look into other options. So we're there to assist them as well, and we're going to provide you the uh, variety of options that are going to be aligned with your likes, dislikes, again, self-awareness. Great. Now, actually, a question for our panel. Have any of you ever changed your major when you were in college? <laughs> Anyone ever do that? I, I did. did. <laughs> Never did? <laughs> Never did. I Ready did. You changed it? Zoom was changed it? Yes. I've done it myself. Okay. Well, statistics show that students tend to change majors uh, up to three times. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're here. Again, that's why we, we want to provide you all the tools needed, all the resources out there, so you can stay put and stay on track with something that is aligned with those goals. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And, uh, Good for you, Monica. <laughs> I <laughs> know, right? Start. Monica either just was wise and knew what it was going to be or was incredibly stubborn. I'm not sure. One of the two. Um, and so, Zumba, thank you so much for thank joining you for us here. Thank you for having here. me. Uh, and so, it's time for another break, and we're going to have some more time with our panel. And I see some more housing questions have come in. We're going to address all those and more. Coming up next is our last episode. We're going to now see what happens to our favorite space alien, Jillybug, who's from another planet but somehow got accepted to USF, a super genius but incredibly naive. And then we got a video that's going to help you with cleaning your room because guess what? You're going to be cleaning your own room, or I hope you do. So we're going to roll those videos. We'll be back with more USF Housing Live after this. <laughs> It's Julie Bug, it's Julie Bug, it's Julie Bug. 
I'm a ladybug. As her freshman year comes to a close, Jillybug looks back on her first few days at the University of South Florida. So Dasha, are you going to be living on campus this summer? Yeah, I'm going to be here for summer B after visit my family in Russia. I'm an international student. You're an international student? I'm an intergalactic student. Really? How many languages do you know? All of them. Wow. Oh. So I can speak to you in Russian, you'll understand? Yeah, totally. Wow. Uh, you know? Я так соскучилась по своей семье и жду не дождусь увидеть их дома, когда поеду обратно. Жаль, конечно, что никого из друзей не увижу до начала учебы. Yeah, I can't wait to be back on campus. I really miss my cousin Larva. I'm gonna see him in the summer. Julebug, meet Alyssa. She was my roommate this year. Alyssa, this is Julebug. Uh, she's from... What's this word in English? Но мы-то с вами все знаем, откуда она на самом деле. Throughout her freshman year, Jillybug had her ups and downs. Her year was full of new experiences. She found new friends, and most importantly, she learned a lot. And now she's ready to visit her planet for the summer. Like Jillybug, you will find your home living at the University of South Florida. Welcome freshman class of 2020. It's Jillybug, it's Jillybug, it's Jillybug. It's chilly bug, it's chilly bug, it's chilly bug! After a long day of classes, do you want to head back to your room, kick up your feet, and relax in a... dirty room? Hardly. This video will show you how to keep your room tidy and organized to make the most of your residential experience at USF. A clean space will promote a calm environment that can help you study. Make sure to get organized from the get-go. If you would like your bed raised or lowered, talk to your RA. Please note that not all beds can be adjusted in this manner. If your residence hall allows for raised beds, your RA will show you how to enter the work request. Decorate your space in a way that defines you. It's great to have a splash of color or personality on the walls. However, be conscious of what your roommate may or may not like. Talk to your roommates about any decorations you both decide to hang. In addition, have a list of emergency numbers visible or handy in your room. When hanging things in your room, be sure to use painter tape, sticky tack, or command strips rather than tacks or nails. Plants are a great addition to your room. If you experience allergies, be sure to dust the blinds and other surfaces. Keep air vents clean and free of obstruction so air is properly circulated in your room. Be sure to hang up all towels and wet clothes to prevent the growth of mold. Try to avoid leaving food out. The food can start to smell or attract bugs. If you have a roommate or friend that is sick, wipe down surfaces such as door handles or mini fridges with antibacterial wipes. Take turns vacuuming and dusting the room with your roommate. It will keep the place tidy and make accomplishing tasks easier. Be sure to clean small messes as you make them. Prevent larger messes by picking up clothes from the floor and making your bed each day before class. When living with roommates, it's important to split responsibilities. Take turns doing common room chores such as cleaning the bathroom, kitchen, and living room if your room has them. Splitting up the work makes everyone happier and healthier. All right, welcome back everyone. So we're here with our panel and now we're gonna be talking with Monica Rashawn from Housing and Residential Education. Monica. Hi. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm okay, what do you do here? I'm a Res Life coordinator, so I supervise the Holly West Apartments. That's Holly A, B, D, and E. Oversee the area, about 400 uh, residents and supervise 11 student staff. All right, great. And so, uh, so we commonly say RLC, I know, for Residence mm -hmm. Life Coordinator, and the students may hear ARLC. Can you tell us what that means? Sure. So ARLCs are Assistant Res Life Coordinators. They are graduate students uh, here at USF, and they are working part-time, but they're assisting with supervising a staff and also overseeing a residential area. 
And so let's say a student wants to reach out and get in touch with you. How can they do that? There's a number of ways. I prefer to talk to people face to face. So you can come to my office, you can email, you can call, you can message me on Facebook. Some residents have messaged me on GroupMe before. So whichever way is the best communication for you. If you contact me via Facebook or GroupMe, I likely will engage with you and eventually tell you to come stop by my office or meet me in the Marshall Center so we can talk face to face. Awesome, excellent. So yes, see people in person. I know that it's fun to be inside of your phone. That's where I live most of the time, but get out there and meet your RLC. <laughs> so thank you, Monica. Uh, I'm gonna break real quick. I have a question that came in. And so I think I might have the answer to this one. And so uh, one of our uh, viewers would like to know, if they wanna stay on campus for the fall semester, uh, but the pending assignment list is full, then how do you get on the pending assignment list if there is one? And so um, there is something called a pending assignment list for those students who are eligible to be assigned but have not yet been able to be assigned because of lack of space on campus. And so to do that, uh, you would log into the housing portal and you'll see the form for that in the housing form section. Uh, we do want to let everyone know that uh, most spaces are full, but you can still join the pending assignment list uh, for an opportunity to get a space if one comes available before grand opening coming up on Thursday, August 18th. The best thing to do for anyone who's not sure is get personalized assistance. And here's what that looks like. You're going to send an email from your USF account to housing at usf.edu and include your UID in the message. It will speed up response time. So you can ask the question and just say, hey, how do I get on the list or am I on the list or what's it looking like for me? You can definitely ask those questions and our assignments team can provide personalized assistance. And also to let you know, there are five properties that are USF affiliated. And so these are recommended uh, spaces for our students to go check out and they're all close to campus and offer uh, a good experience for those students that are attending USF but want to live off campus and if you couldn't get a spot on campus, then an affiliated property is a great option. Go to usf.edu slash housing, click resources, and then affiliated properties, and you'll see the list of all five right there. So definitely check them out, and maybe you'll sign up with one of them. So those are options available to you. Um, got another question here about uh, the busiest time and when most people arrive during move-in day. And so, mm -hmm. Monica, from what I remember, it's normally midday, right? Yeah, it's definitely midday. I would come in the morning or after midday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so uh, the grand opening time is gonna be nine o'clock mm -hmm. to 3.30. That's when we're gonna be running bowl hall. We're gonna have over 400 bowl hall volunteers. They're gonna help you move your stuff from your car into your room, and so it's great support to have. Mm -hmm. And as I remember from looking at the numbers the other day, we see 11 o'clock to one o'clock as the busiest time. Mm -hmm. You show up at nine o'clock, you're probably gonna avoid some of the rush, but don't worry if you arrive midday. We do have it set up to handle thousands of new students, and so it's gonna be a quick process no matter what, but if you do wanna avoid any type of wait, then showing up right at nine is gonna help with that, or showing up between one and 3.30 will help with that. Mm -hmm. But generally, early is always better, so get here early. You don't wanna miss out on one minute of your USF experience, right? I agree. <laughs> and so, uh, Monica, I got some other questions for you here. Okay. Um, so. We talk about someone called the RA. What does that mean and who is that? Yeah, so RAs are resident assistants, um, and there is one on every floor, and some RAs oversee more than one floor, uh, but they're really there as a resource to residents. They can connect you to all types of uh, resources on campus, whether it's academic, counseling services, um, and your RLC as well. So get to know your RA. You definitely want to know them. If there's it makes you feel like you're a part of a community and you're a part of a smaller community within your floor. Um, so that should be one of the first people that you get to know on campus. So when's a student going to find out who their RA is? So all RAs have a first community meeting August 21st. That's the Sunday before classes start. Um, and it, it'll be in your WOW packet um, or Week of Welcome brochure. Um, so you will, you will get that as an incoming student or even a transfer student. Uh, you definitely want to meet your RA at that first community meeting. And so we talked a little bit about this earlier. And so what is WOW? WOW! Uh, and should students attend? Yeah, so WOW is week wow. of <laughs> WOW! is week of welcome. Uh, and you do want to attend. There's a lot of events to choose from. So if you, there's something you find of interest or a club or organization that's hosting an event, just stop by. You know, you can go by yourself. You can go with your roommate or your RA. But I, I would say don't be afraid to go by yourself because you're going to meet a lot of people there. Yeah, I mean, I would think that students who are out there on their own are thinking, oh, well, I'm the only person like this. But no, mm -hmm. you're new here. Get out there and meet people, right? Exactly. Hold and hands I with a stranger, make a friend. Uh, a stranger is just a friend you haven't met unless, you know, you're off campus. Like we said, they're a weirdo, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> and I understand, like, you know, sometimes large events can bring anxiety for some people, especially it's a new setting, a social setting. So if you want to go with someone, 
your roommate might be a good person to go with. Cool. And so thinking about the residential experience in the hall, are there groups available that students can join uh, and uh, once they arrive here on campus? Mm -hmm. There are so many clubs and organizations uh, that are outside of residence life. There's one that I recommend that is a part of residence life, and that's Hall Council. So every area will have a Hall Council, um, and it's basically a programming board for the community that you live in. So there's an executive board, and then uh, officers each hold an office in the club, and you program for your area. So if you see a need in your community, um, you know, then you can advocate for that need, whether that's um, water fountains in your community. Advocate for that, and your ROC will assist you in that, and so will the resident assistants. All right, excellent. So uh, another question here is, so uh, from time to time, there are students that raise a concern uh, regarding a future roommate, if that roommate might be uh, gay or uh, identify with a gender that differs from mm -hmm. their biological sex. And so what can you share to help prepare those individuals for their campus experience? Sure. I, I would say that your RA and your RLC and ARLC are resources for both of the students who are involved in that uh, situation, whether it's a student who's struggling with their sexual identity or gender identity or they're very comfortable with their authentic self, but they're just unsure how to share that with their roommate, um, we could mediate a conversation. Um, and there's also resources that we could uh, share with them, talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, um, and reach out to the you know, LGBT coordinator on campus in our Office of Multicultural Affairs. Uh, but we're equipped to have that conversation with residents and also make sure that we're advocating for an inclusive environment for all students so that all students feel comfortable in our halls. Great, thank you. And so I know uh, the next thing I want to ask about has been politicized somewhat, but truly, uh, you know, here at USF, we know that it's a place that is accepting of our students, that mm -hmm. validates that you can be who you are, and that is a great thing, and that is celebrated. And so the question of bathrooms comes up. So yeah. how do we use the bathrooms on campus? <laughs> yeah, I mean, how do you use the bathroom at home? Do you share it with everyone who lives <laughs> in your house or, you know? So I think it's the same way. If there's someone who's using the bathroom and you're skeptical of their gender, then I think you should just mind your business, use the bathroom, and allow that person to freely use the bathroom and trust that they know that they're in the correct bathroom. Um, because again, that you're, we're trying to heighten the human decency for everyone and, and all students should feel like they have dignity on our campus, all staff should feel like that. So just trust that they know that they're going to the right bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Monica. Yeah, if you, if you find yourself walking up to a stranger and engaging in some type of confrontation in a bathroom, you're using the bathroom wrong. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> go in there, do your business, go on with your day, okay? And so, there we go, I think that covers that, I think right? It covers it. <laughs> and so, um, that's all the time we have for our panel. Let's go ahead and hear it for thank Monica. You. Thank all you. right, Zuma, <laughs> Raymond. Thank you so much, everyone. Wonderful having you on the thank show. You. I hope we have you back sometime soon. Thank you. All right, we'll see you in season three. And so, uh, <laughs> coming up next, we have a special message from the student government president and vice president and the final. Nicolina, for your thoughts. We're going to roll that. More Housing Live coming your way right after this. Hello, I'm Chris Griffin, your student body president. And I'm Alec Wade, your student body vice president. And we'd like to begin by welcoming you once again to the University of South Florida. Your student experience at USF is a primary focus of student government. And as our on-campus residents, you play a huge role in the success of our university and the development of our campus life. Your first 50 days on campus will form the foundation of your entire college experience. And Chris and I cannot stress enough how important it is for you to get involved and make the most of your time at USF. Whether you join a student organization or get involved in research, the choices you make now will lay the foundation for you to grow into the bull that you hope to soon become. If you ever have any questions, want to get involved with what we're doing for the student body, or just want to chat, feel free to stop by our office on the fourth floor of the Marshall Student Center. You can even run for office or join our street team and begin making an impact and creating the change that you want to see in our university. We're excited to see you around campus and hear about all that you come to accomplish. It is students like you who make USF so great and your commitment to our student body means so much to the both of us. Good luck in your classes. Have a great first semester and don't forget to stop by student government and say hello. And as always, go Bulls. Go Bulls. So welcome baby bulls, we're only a few weeks away from the beginning of the semester and I bet your minds are racing with all the things that you want to be when you get here. And one of those things is a good roommate. So today we're going to go over some different tips for different halls on how to be a good roommate.
Wake up with one alarm, not a few. Clean up after yourself in the common bathroom. And don't forget your key and lanyard combo for when you go to the bathroom so your roommate may not lock you out if they leave. Try not to lock your sweet mates out of the bathroom. Make sure you keep your side of the room clean. Coordinate bathroom times so you don't overlap if someone needs it. In addition to all of the above, please keep the common areas clean. This means do your dishes and also put away your stuff when you're done with it. Respect your roommate's boundaries. Make sure you actually ask them what bothers them and what doesn't, because a roommate relationship is a give and take. All right, welcome back everyone. Again, I'm Gregory Bowers with Housing Residential Education. We are the best place to live, the best place to work, and the best place to learn. And so the time has come for us to announce a winner of our $100 B&H gift card so they can get some awesome stuff online. And so let's hear it for our audience, a little drum roll, please. All right, our winner is Bethany. Bethany, where are you out there? With a $100 gift card, okay. I'd say you don't spend it all in one place, but uh, it's a gift card, so spend it all in one place. All right, so um, also make sure you stick around with us in the credits. We tried to play a little bit of a prank on the audience. However, USF Bulls are incredibly intelligent, so it didn't go as planned, but it's still a lot of fun. We're going to roll that in the credits for you. I want to say a special thank you to Andy Johnson, our Director of Housing Operations and Outreach, and of course to our Assistant Vice President, Anna Hernandez, for her support along the way. We've done two seasons, and we look forward to a fun season three coming up in February for our next entering class and of course I can't forget our amazing student crew let's hear it for our student crew seven episodes this season wonderful job everyone thank you so much again our motto is best place to live best place to work best place to learn and there's just one last thing go, go Bulls good night everyone Get you their phone. Yeah, I got the phones, Greg. Did you get the phone? Well, it's not a problem. We just we're going live. Listen, Greg, why are you always second guessing me? Oh. I got the phones. He got the phones, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I got your phones. Jack. I have the phones. Jack, I have the phones. Listen, I'm not gonna do this anymore. I'm not gonna take all your crap. I have the phones. Stop. <laughs> Ridiculous. How's that for your phones, huh? <laughs> 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 did we get anyone in the audience with that? No. How did we not get any of you? A round of applause for Jack Dickens, everyone.